Hey guys, it's Sam with The Blind Spot. So I recently got an email, a gentleman asking how to set up a brand new computer for low vision. Uh, if, if I had a list of things that I do right from the start to get a computer ready to go for myself working with low vision, what would that list be? So today's video, I'll go through those things. But before we get started, I want to mention that all vision impairment is different. So because of that, the things that we do, the little tips and tricks, the little workarounds that we use to manage with that vision impairment, those are all going to be different as well. So what works for me isn't necessarily going to work for someone else. So keep that in mind as we go along here today. Uh, the things that I'm going to show you, you can maybe just consider those a baseline. In my experience, these will help people with low vision in general. Then you might need to go in and tweak certain things here or there to make them work better for you. Okay, so that being said, so number one, you can tell my wallpaper. I always go in and change the wallpaper. And I actually have a slideshow wallpaper going, so it changes every uh, maybe 10 minutes, I believe. I forget exactly how long it's set for. But one thing you'll notice about all the wallpapers is that they are very dark. I like dark wallpapers because it allows my icons to pop off the screen much better than if this were a very busy bright colored wallpaper. When you have a very busy wallpaper it's hard to see your icons. So get a dark wallpaper. Now number two is I change the size of my icons on my desktop here. One way to do that is to right click on the desktop then you choose view and you can set large, medium, small, that's medium and I mentioned in a previous video that it's quite a jump from medium to large and that is small, tiny, tiny, tiny. Now that's one way to do it but a much quicker, easier way to do it that has a lot more flexibility is to hold down the control button on your keyboard and use the wheel on the mouse to scroll through and enlarge your icons and we can get way bigger than we could have. So this is probably about where I usually keep them. Now I should also mention that that little trick works in file explorers like this one. Hold down control and the mouse wheel will zoom through all the sizes here so you can make them really big if you want. So if you're looking at pictures here you can make them pretty big or you can make them small smaller and you can see much more on the page there. That little trick also works in web pages. Okay, number three here is we're going to change the resolution of the screen. When you first get your computer and you're setting up Windows, everything is really small. Your start menu is pretty small off to the side. The notification shade over here that pops out is pretty small. So all your menus are pretty small. So we want to change the resolution of the screen to make those things bigger and easier to see much like they are on my screen already. So we right click on the desktop and then we need to go to display which is right above personalize. So this slider is what you want to adjust right here. I have mine set to 150 and you can see as we slide it it will give you a little preview of what it looks like and how big it will make it. And if I hit the start menu, you can see it almost fills up the whole screen. So now if I go down, back down to 150, if I go all the way back down to where it was, this is how big it is when you first get your computer. This is what it's set to by default. You see how small that start menu is? Those little tiles are tiny. If I were to open up a menu, look how small that menu is. So we're going to put this back to 150, which is where I like it. And as I said before, it's totally up to you guys how much you want to increase that resolution. But now as I pop up my start menu, much bigger, much easier to see these, these tiles here and click on them for me, even when I'm not zoomed in. So changing the resolution, that's one of the most important things to do. We just need to right click on the desktop, go down to the bottom to personalize, and that takes us into our personalization settings here. We're going to click on colors, 
and this is how you can change the colors of your start menu here like mine is just this gray um, you can change it to any color you want here and it, you see it will change the colors you can do a little preview and you'll also notice that when you do change a color it also changes the color of your taskbar at the bottom let's see what color would be good let's go with red how do we like red no oh, never mind <laughs> we're not doing red uh, let's see how about this blue uh, man, I gotta say I, I kinda just like the gray that I had I don't know where that was though how about this blue no how about this one no oh man darker's better for me I wish they had a black there we go yeah that gray is about the best thing that works for me but anyway then down here at the bottom you have a couple options show color on start task bar action center and title bar and that's enough I have that set to on make start task bar and action center transparent and that is as you see when I bring up my start menu here all this section over here and right through here is all transparent so you can change that if you want in fact let's see what that looks like I'll turn that off and now it's not transparent so that might be actually be better for a lot of people there we go that's how to turn it black ah, ha, ha, ha. we just figured that out together alright I turned that off I turned off the colors and it changed my taskbar black change this all black I like that much better let's see what it looks like with the transparent though I, I gotta say I kinda like the transparent but as I said that's different for everybody you guys can decide what you want to do but I'm gonna leave it transparent but I am gonna leave it black I like it black okay so we've made progress next we're going to fix this pesky mouse pointer very easy I just want to type in pointer and the very top one there is change the mouse pointer so I'm just gonna hit enter and it brings up this window let's bring it over here so we can see it better and we're even gonna zoom in a little bit now up here at the tab I want to click on pointer and there it shows all the different options quick tip here you can just tap on your keyboard arrows up and down to cycle through all the pointers here I'm using the Windows inverted extra large is the name of this one and I love this one because it's really big it's as big as you can get it but it's it inverts the color so it takes the opposite of whatever color you put the mouse on so if I'm on the white here it's black but as soon as I move over to the darker background it turns white and you can even see I'm halfway on and halfway off so it takes the opposite of whatever color is underneath it now one more thing while we're in here uh, in the pointer in the pointer I don't know why I keep saying it that way the pointer in the pointer <laughs> settings here there's a setting down here at the very bottom it says show location of the pointer when I press the control button so and I've got that ticked on so that means that if I tap the control button you get a little circle a little uh, kinda like a bullseye going down to the pointer I turn that on because if I do happen to lose it somehow like maybe it's up here in the clock and it kinda blends in all I need to do is tap that and it catches my eye oh there it is there's my pointer so one more thing that I like to do is I come into display and we're gonna click on advanced display settings we're going to adjust the text size uh, advanced sizing of text and other items first though I'll mention this clear type text this is a good thing to do um, clear type makes the text easier to see and easier to read this is a little wizard uh, that you can run through to set up clear type 
and it's very simple you just go through the wizard um, they'll show you several different boxes you pick which one is easier to see and then the next page will be maybe six boxes and then the next page is four boxes and you just you slowly refine the clear type choosing which box is easier to see and eventually it gets to um, the optimum settings for you and it's pretty quick and easy so I recommend that but first we are going to do the advanced sizing of text so I'm gonna click on that so over to the side here we have uh, adjust resolution we've done that calibrate color that would be a great thing to do as well at some other time change display settings we've done that and adjust clear type text we've done that so here in the middle you can change the size of text and items you can custom scale text that's an option um, down here though you have a drop down menu of several different window objects uh, title bars message boxes icons tool tips etc etc so you can choose one and then you can choose the font size um, I've got mine set to 10 but it can go really big if you want and then you can choose bold or not bold and I've done that on several things um, one thing in particular is my menu here I've changed the size of my menu made them a little bit bigger keep in mind though that this takes up much more space now and eventually if you go too big you're gonna have issues where things are running off the screen so that's just something to take into consideration as you play around with these settings okay guys so those are the few things that I do every single time I'm setting up a new computer as I said before you can use that as a base and then tweak things here and there uh, there are other things that I would do as well including getting one of these giant clocks I do that every time I have this guy on my work computer I have it here at home I've got it on my laptop um, I love just being able to sit back here and see that it says 954 <laughs> and I can even make this bigger if I need to bigger or smaller I've made a video about these uh, these are called X widgets and I've made a video about that you can check out my channel for that and then probably the only other thing I would mention is adding as many of your frequently used programs to tiles in your start menu here because it makes it so much easier to see um, I can see this big chrome button here um, I know this is my notepad audacity premiere pro I mean having these here I number one I put them here but it's just a big icon that's easy for me to see easy for me to find and easy for me to click on so fill all these up and these are all customizable you can move these around wherever you want so keep that in mind alright guys well that's where I'm gonna stop for this video thank you very much for watching thank you very much to the viewer that suggested this video topic as always if you guys have any questions please let me know down below I'll do my best to help out if you like the video be sure to hit that like button and also click on subscribe so you can stay up to date with all the videos coming out in the future Thank you again for watching. This is Sam with The Blind Spot. I'll see you next time.